This is my review for Tomb Raider 3. Hey! This game is about a beautiful, powerful, <laughs> elegant Raider of Tombs. The storyline is pretty typical for a Tomb Raider game, where you play as Laura, and you need to search different parts of the world for ancient and rare artifacts. Indeed, I'm inspired. I'd like to offer you other work. Now, if you've played any Tomb Raider games before, you would know that these artifacts are often magical or hold some type of power, and in this game, it is no different. So the scientist man gives you some backstory on some weird stuff that has been going on, and you decide to raid some tombs. So you travel the world, beat up bad guys, and make friends with this gang that seems to live in the London underground. Business, not pleasure. Though obviously not for revenge. The gang's leader tells Laura how some lady named Sophia turned them immortal and disformed. What a question is that, eh? I don't even have a face, man. But they will only help you if you go grab some mummy stuff for them. But Miss Lee's cosmetic company. So, of course, you go jumping around to collect mummy things to give to your new friends. Then you go find the evil Sophia lady, who of course has some type of artifact that you want. Right, in your next life. So you decide to fight her for it. During the Nevada part of the game, you invade a military base known as Area 51 that has a couple of orcas for some reason, but they also have some aliens. Your travels include going to Antarctica, where you raid some more tombs and kill some more bad guys. The storyline of the game is pretty simple. You are Laura Croft, you collect artifacts, kill bad guys, and travel the world raiding tombs. Investigations have led us to this. The storyline is very rinse and repeat, but Tomb Raider isn't known for its simple storyline. It's known for its gameplay. The gameplay is pretty solid. If you've played any of the previous Tomb Raider games before, you would know that raiding tombs requires a lot of jumping, sliding, climbing, and falling. Lots and lots of falling. The platforming in this game is one of its finer qualities. You don't just figure out where you need to jump, but how. Do I jump at an angle? Do I jump and grab in the air? Or should I jump, roll back, and grab? Trying to successfully stick the landing is one of the most frustrating parts of the game. I think the challenging platforming is something that makes this game special. However, the consequences for not landing a jump is something that can be so frustrating that at times I need to step away from the game. If you fail a jump, you not only have to backtrack to where you were, but if you die, you have to restart all the way from where your last save was. Now, in Tomb Raider 2, this aspect of the game was far less frustrating because Tomb Raider 2 allowed you to save at any point of the game. For example, if I knew there was going to be a risky jump that could lead to my doom, I would simply save the game before my jump and then retry from that point if I died. But in Tomb Raider 3, they have taken away that luxury and have instead replaced that option with save crystals. Ah uh, yes, the elusive save crystal. Big, bright, blue, beautiful save crystal. So instead of being able to save wherever you want, the ability to save is now again a privilege. The crystals are limited, therefore your options to save the game are also limited. So you must use your save crystals wisely. While some crystals are found easily on your path, others are hard to get to, or are hidden throughout the game, so there is a good chance that you might only find a fraction of the already limited save crystals.
Thankfully, if you complete a level, then the game allows you to save your game without having to sacrifice one of your precious save crystals. Thank you for your mercy, Tomb Raider 3. I'm not sure why they decided to make the later Tomb Raider installment more difficult with these save crystals. Maybe they thought Tomb Raider 2 is too easy. Maybe they thought people missed this type of challenge. With that being said, if having to repeat most of your game over and over due to limited saves sounds too frustrating for you, then I recommend you play Tomb Raider 2 instead. The previous Tomb Raider is just as fun and is also a decently length Tomb Raider game with similar look and feel to Tomb Raider 3. The combat system is similar to the previous Tomb Raider games. You have Laura's classic double pistols with unlimited ammo. But you can also find other more powerful guns throughout the game. Besides the generic gun wielding bad guys walking around, you also have a variety of animals to kill. There are monkeys, vultures, dinosaurs, and yes, you get to fight a T-Rex. There is also a variety of boss fights, with each one having a slightly different level design to defeat them. Most boss fights require Laura to jump around to avoid getting hit, while trying to shoot back at her opponent. But the boss fight that stood out to me the most does not require any gunfire at the enemy. The fight with Sophia. Ah, Miss Croft. The fight with Sophia was one of the most interesting, but also the most frustrating. This game, much like many other old school games, does not hold your hand throughout the game. So with this boss fight, I would assume that I would want to defeat my enemy by shooting them or hurting them with my environment. <laughs> but the only thing that the environment had to offer was for Laura to climb. So climb she did. Well, eventually you climb to the top where there seems to be nothing left for you to do but to continue shooting Sophia. While, spoiler alert, you should actually shoot this power box. And then also not land in the wrong place. But frustrating trial and error is what Tomb Raider does best. Especially when it comes to their puzzles. There are various puzzles throughout the game, and while some of them can be frustrating, none of the puzzles felt too repetitive. There were also some vehicles throughout the game, which helped break the feel of the constant jumping around. You get to go through booby traps while riding around on a kayak. You get to boat around in Antarctica. And you get to ride around in a minecart. Being able to use different vehicles as a weapon or simply just to get from one place to another really helped the game feel more enjoyable and feel less repetitive. The artwork for each environment is very distinct for each new level. Nevada looked like a desert. London felt like a city. And in Antarctica, you not only get to see snow, but you can also freeze to death while swimming in the water. The graphics for the game were fine for its time. Laura's boxy curbs fit in all the right places. As for sound, the game is mostly quiet. The game sometimes plays some ambient sounds. And while jumping around or falling, Laura will let out a grunt or a scream. The quietness of the game makes you pay attention to your environment so that you can hear nearby enemies or so that you can hear the sound of an upcoming trap. The voice acting during the cutscenes are fine, but nothing special. It seems I've not been invited to the Barbie. Maybe you're the dessert. Although the acting for the game doesn't seem to require much difficulty. For real? Listen, we'd better get you out of here. Overall, I feel that Tomb Raider 3 
is a solid game for those that are up for the frustration or the challenge. But for me, I would prefer to replay Tomb Raider 2. I would give Tomb Raider 3 a 7.4 out of 10.